Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and today we're going to take a quick look at the Head Audio Headphone 2. So if you're not familiar with Head Audio, they have been traditionally known for making studio speakers. And for the past couple of years, they've been dabbling in the headphone market with their patented AMT driver technology, which we'll talk about. And uh, yeah, this is their second ever headphone, the Headphone 2. It's coming in at a fairly steep $2,000, but a lot of that reason is because of that driver technology. So what they're using is what they call an air motion transformer. And if you understand just more traditional driver types, right? You've got your dynamic driver, your planar driver, even electrostat drivers. The AMT is even more uncommon than those ones. And it effectively functions kind of like a bellows or like um, like an accordion where it's like this, I don't know, I can't really explain it totally, but that's my understanding of it. And it, it's kind of interesting to have that in a product like this. So now, obviously this is not a studio speaker. This is a full range headphone driver. And I was curious to spend a little bit more time with this thing and figure out like, is this a good technology for people like me? Because again, this thing's apparently working well in studios. I'm in a studio of sorts, but not that kind of studio. Uh, and I have heard this headphone a couple of times before at Can Jam shows. And I'll be honest, I was a little bit unsure what to think. So I was happy to spend an extended amount of time with the headphone. Shout out to Head Audio, by the way, for sending this guy in for review and uh, ready to let you know what I think. Um, anything else to talk about before we get into it? I don't think so. So let's just dive to the table. We'll talk about what you get inside. Dive to the table, the wrong button. There we go. That's the right button. We'll talk about what you get inside the package with the headphone too. Uh, talk about the physical form factor, build quality, comfort, all that good stuff. Then we'll get into talking about the sound, exactly what I think about this headphone. But for now, here is the carry case, which is frankly a really nice carry case. It's got nice molded components. In fact, I think this has even got, look at that, a little compartment for your cables, which is pretty cool. Now, as far as cables, what you get, I think there's actually one other cable that came in the box that I don't have here on the table, but let's, uh, let's focus on what we do have. Uh, includes a 6.3 to 3.5 mil termination, which means that as you might expect, this cable has a 6.3 mil connector on this end. On the other end, it has got dual 3.5 mil entry, which just means that this is a really easy cable to replace. If you want to swap this out with another headphone, um, or sorry, another cable, you can see that it's just got this very standard 3.5 mil dual entry, lots of options out there on the market. And to be honest, I, 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 I took advantage of those options because this cable is, it's not my favorite. I don't know. I, headphone cables just, they're kind of all over the place in terms of uh, uh, quality and behavior and stuff like that. And this thing has kind of an interesting braid to it. Almost looks like an IM cable and it's actually somewhat thin for a headphone cable, but it is nonetheless fairly stiff, a little bit on the springy side. It's also a little bit longer than I personally tend to like. I would say this is, let's say like six to eight feet. It's, it's longer than I can stretch my arms out uh, here. And Oh, well, I also am not really a big 6.5 guy. I'm a 3.5 guy, right? So this is a solution, but it's certainly not my personal ideal solution. The other cable that I mentioned, I think this came with was a balanced cable, a balanced 4.4 mil cable, which is an interesting option to include as well. Um, just note that, you know, it's a little bit on the long side, a little bit stiff side. Uh, personally, I preferred using a little cable like this, but this didn't come in the package. So I'm just kind of showing you what I use. But other than that, we use this headphone and I guess we can move this stuff. Hold on, let me, let me make room on the table to focus on the headphone too. Fold this thing flat so we can take a look at it and appreciate it. So a couple of things to know about, I guess the previous headphone before we dive into this, is that the original headphone was fairly well criticized for being pretty big and heavy. If you've ever used it yourself, you probably know what I'm talking about, but because it's kind of a rare headphone, there's a good chance you've never tried and just look up pictures of the original headphone, H E D D headphone. Uh, it's very large on people's heads, uh, made of nice materials and stuff like that, but it was also pretty heavy at, from what I can tell, 730 grams so over, over 700 grams puts the original headphone at the very high end of audiophile headphones. This one with the headphone two, they got the weight down quite a bit to around 550 grams, which I know is still not super lightweight, but if you're used to wearing hi-fi headphones, I feel like 500 grams is about where like, I'm fine with most with, with the weight of that. Anything above like 600 grams is where I start to notice it. So this, I personally found to be actually pretty comfortable during the day. 
again, your mileage may vary depending on what you're used to. And if you're used to more consumer friendly headphones like a Sony XM5 or a, a, a Audio Technica M50X or something like that, those are gonna be like sub 300 grams. So this thing's probably still like double the weight of those headphones. But if you're used to things um, like uh, Hyphaman uh, Sundara or frankly, even like the AirPods Max, this isn't gonna be that much heavier than those. So yeah, they did a pretty good job getting the weight down now. The sacrifice for it was some utilitarianness to the aesthetic of this headphone, which is probably the first thing that you responded to. And I'm taking this long to get to talking about, but yeah, aesthetically, this thing is a little bit of a science project, uh, but it kind of works. It kind of works. So they are still using pretty premium materials, even though they got the weight down. In fact, this headband, take a look at that. That's actual carbon fiber. Like that's a big slab of carbon fiber. Um, which, you know, it's a $2,000 headphone, so they're not sparing any expenses there. But that, while it might not look super handsome and attractive, uh, definitely cuts down on the weight. And then I believe they're using magnesium for a lot of the, uh, the metal parts on this headphone, which include the yokes, uh, this part right here, and maybe even the cups, although I can't tell. The cups feel a little bit warm to the touch, so those might be plastic. Um, but yeah, still using premium materials. They just got the weight down, but... The other result is that you get this pretty bizarre adjustment mechanism here for the headband. Now, there's some good things and some bad things to say about this. Uh, I mean, I'll start with the bad is it just looks weird, right? It looks pretty strange. And I would say that the other bad is that it, there's a little bit more of a learning curve with this headband versus your more traditional headphone. Um, because the adjustment mechanism isn't just like little notches that you move the headband up and down on. It's the strap system. And it's actually, it took me a while to figure this out. It's actually like a two tiered strap system. So you see that there's a, a strap down here and a strap up top. And let me make sure I got this thing back in the right spot. Got two marks there, two marks there. All right, perfect. Um, but what's unique about it and what's actually kind of cool is that because it has a, that two tier strap, not only can you adjust it for the size of your head, uh, which is important because everyone's got different size heads, but you can also adjust it for the clamp pressure, right? Um, I believe it's actually this top strap, which is the one that affects the clamp pressure. And it, you know, basically determines how, how wide this thing will stretch without it pulling in and crushing your head. So if you've got a wider head, ostensibly you can adjust this thing out to not be so clampy. Um, or if you're just uh, averse to a clampy headphone, you can dial it into your preference. I'll say that I just, here's the other thing actually, just to quickly note about the clamp pressure is that clamp pressure on a headphone can actually have a pretty significant role and impact on the way a headphone sounds. Um, if you take a headphone that you're used to wearing and then just kind of like squeeze it in slightly, you'll probably notice that the sound changes. And that's, I'd be honest, I did not adjust this thing for sound. I adjusted this thing for comfort. Um, so just know that that is a thing that you'll probably want to deal with um, when you're playing with this headphone. Anyway, anything else I wanted to say? Yes, I did. I want to talk about the ear pads here. So they are, I'm going to call them cozy. It's not super, super large inside here. You know, there's plenty of depth. I don't have any real issues with my ears touching like the back of the driver or anything like that. Um, but top to bottom, there's not a ton of room in there, but I don't know. I found it comfortable enough. Um, but you know, if you're living in a, in a hotter environment, that could be an issue for you. Um, and generally I did find the ear pads, even though they are kind of like these interesting boxy squares, I did find it to be compliant enough that I get a pretty consistent seal. Uh, and I guess I can give you a fit demonstration. Actually, let's punch out so you can see what this thing looks like on a human head. Um, but yeah, generally I actually found the headphone, you know, pretty comfortable. Uh, again, weight wise, it's not super light, but it's not heavy enough that it became uh, a thing that I was even really conscious of. Um, clamp pressure for me is good. Again, you can kind of dial it into exactly where you want it. Um, and I feel like it's at a good level of being supportive and like stuck on my head, but not crushing my head as well. And then you can see that the ear pads uh, do conform to my head and they create a nice, you know, consistent seal, both along the bottom, the tops and the sides of my my ears, which is what I like to see. Uh, the one last thing that I will comment on the build quality before we start talking about the sound, <clears throat> and this is probably my only real big complaint about the build on this thing, honestly. You know, it looks weird, but I can get over that. Actually, I don't know, it's kind of endearing in a way. Uh, but my real one serious complaint about it would be uh, to do actually with that AMT driver. So 
if you are used to hearing driver flex in, you know, sometimes with the IMs you can hear it, right? You put the IM in your ear and the pressure can sometimes flex a dynamic driver and make a little bit of a crinkling noise. Or if you're used to listening to electrostatic headphones and stuff like that, a lot of the times those, especially the ones that seal really well, they'll make like some pretty obvious like flexing sounds as you put them on your head. The AMT in this one is an example of a driver that flexes quite a bit. In fact, let me give you a little bit of a sound impression. You hear that? So I mentioned that these things kind of operate like a like a bellows or like a like a, a an accordion of sorts. So just kind of imagine that sort of structure in there as these things are pressuring or you know creating air air pressure on your head. So it's the sort of thing that when I'm putting it on my head, as I'm fitting it around, I hear lots of crinkling. Um, but it's not the sort of thing that's as unpleasant as some dynamic driver crinkling and not as delicate and like some e stats, it feels like I'm about to break them. This one feels, eh, I don't like it, but it doesn't scare me. <laughs> we'll just say that. All right. So I think that's probably about as much as I can say about the physical form factor. So let's talk about the sound. And before I do, I'm just checking my notes. And um, yeah, let's go to the frequency response, which we've got on Squiggly. If you want to check this out for yourself, I've got it linked in the description down below. But yeah, this is the frequency response of the headphone 2 as measured on my rig. And I think that this illustrates a couple of things about the sound, which is that it is very mid-rangey sound signature, very a very probably overly midsy sound signature. Um, and that comes across in the frequency response over here. You can see there's a little bit of boxiness in kind of the lower mid-range, but maybe even more significantly is this pretty significant dip in the lower treble, okay? And that really does have a pretty big impact on the sound signature of this headphone. Like it sounds overly midsy. It sounds a little bit boxy. It almost kind of sounds like someone's talking a little bit like this, where it's just, it's all about the mids and kind of to the detriment of the stock sound signature. Now, the good things about this sound signature is that you can see that even though the bass isn't like following this target exactly, the bass actually extends pretty well. Um, as well, the treble also extends pretty well. And then the other thing that stands out is that not only is the treble extending pretty well, but it's also not particularly peaky. And when it comes to my listening impressions of the headphone, uh, I would say that not only is it not peaky, but there is also like a, a really good sense of texturing in the sound there. So you've got, while the, the stock tuning is, is again, it's frankly pretty weird and uh, it's not my favorite. Let's just say that there are some nice technical things that it's doing. In fact, some things that are maybe a little bit difficult to do that this thing is doing well, that in my mind means this headphone begs for EQ. So here's what I'm gonna say. I, I EQ the heck out of this headphone. And I'm, that doesn't mean like I used a lot of EQ filters. I'm just using four filters. In fact, if you're curious to see what I did with my EQ filters, let me pull those up over here. So this is the stock frequency response. Um, this is what it looks like with my EQ. And I mean, obviously I follow the target, so it, so it must sound good, right? It does actually sound really pretty fantastic. Uh, if you want to try out my EQ profile, I'll have it in the description. Um, you'll just have to copy paste it, load it into a uh, parametric EQ pro, um, program, whatever you use. But with this sound signature, this headphone is frankly pretty, pretty, pretty fantastic. Uh, you just get a nice, really snappy, responsive treble without any peaks um, and just gobs of texturing. It's not just present in the treble, like it does a really good job with anything that plays in the high frequency, you know, percussion, stuff like that, but also it carries through into the mid-range texturing where vocals just sound fantastic on this set with EQ. You also get nice, powerful bass, like it's a full bodied type of sound. Unlike, you know, there are some other headphones that do pretty good with the bass and even kind of impart like a warm tone to them, but still have like a, a sense of hollowness behind the sound. The, the head, the head two doesn't do that. It does a really good job of it. And it's just generally nice and articulate across the frequency response. I would say that in terms of imaging, the headphone two, even with my EQ profile is not like the widest stereo image, but it's still pretty good. And I would say that in terms of like separation between sounds, positioning and stuff like that, all that is actually really, really, really well done. 
Frankly, I would say that the top end on this headphone with EQ is frankly competitive with, I don't know, just about anything else that I've heard. Again, it's not gonna be the widest, most impressive stereo image, but the flip side of that is that you get really good texturing and you don't have any of that sort of peaky treble that you get in a lot of like the high-end planars that frankly can be impressive for uh, short terms, but is not the most satisfying in the long term. Without EQ, however, I will say that the technicalities on this thing, while they are still kind of present, it's hard to appreciate them. So in my mind, this is a headphone that if you're not considering using EQ, I would probably skip this headphone. And I think that's going to lead us into wrapping up this review out of five stars, the head audio head two. I'm going to give it three stars. Okay. Again, I think EQ is required to fully enjoy this headphone with EQ. This is a fantastic headphone. One of, frankly, my favorite headphones, if I'm honest. Just, it does, the texturing is so good. And it just, again, it, it, it has the technical chops there. It just needs the tuning, which you can do with EQ. If you're not planning to EQ, however, I think a $300 Sennheiser HD 600 sounds a lot better than this headphone because the tuning on it is frankly just a little bit overly midsy, a little bit boxy, and a little bit like this again. Um, again, if you want to check out the, what this thing can sound like with EQ, if you've got a chance to try this headphone, maybe you've got one for yourself. I've got my EQ in the description down below. I think it's worth it, but certainly limiting. But if you're not planning to use EQ, this is probably a headphone that I would skip. Um, maybe a little bit of a novelty just because of the, that driver type, but I think that's going to do it for my thoughts here on the head audio too. If you want to check it out, I've got it linked in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, please do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and I'll catch you on the next super review. Cheers. Reviews. We now have the tools to brave the misleading world of audio fools. Uh -huh. Hey, this review is super, and so are you. Grab your headphones, sniff a graph, and share your thoughts in this pursuit.